but when it's offline, you can use these fir three, po this first three points of the configuration to redirect the, all the infected bots to another, to another point where you have your installed new server. No? So you can, you can change the whole setup to another computer. And now the, the three main configuration options, as I said, uh, basically it captures all data, but for, for banking sites, it needs some special configuration. This configuration, for example, includes the web filters. As you can see in the configuration, some URLs or some, some strings are put with an exclamation mark, which basically means you skip this data. Everything, each URL which, uh, which fits to one of these strings gets skipped to, to avoid, uh, to, to skip data you don't need to or you, you don't want to. URLs with an at at the beginning, this is a special case, the Trojan is possible of making screenshots of the virtual keyboards. Some, some banks have uh, introduced virtual keyboards to avoid capturing the, the login data, but also this, the, the, the SUS Trojan is capable of capturing, and you can configure these URLs with the at at the beginning from the configuration file. Here are actually some screenshots made by the Trojan, how it captures it, so you can see every time you click on one of the digits or of the, of the characters in your virtual keyboard, the uh, Trojan makes a screenshot of it and has at the end a uh, uh, folder with six screenshots, for example, and like this it's capable of, of capturing also data from the virtual keyboards. And even like this in, in Spain, it's like this, now they begin to move these keyboards because uh, to, to make it even more possible, but as you can see also, uh, you know, the, the trick that you, that you make the screenshot just after you, you really made it. So actually the screenshot if take, is taken after you made your, your click, but as you can see also this works because it's on, on Windows level. For example, the, 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 the banking trojans which operate on the browser level, so the com object or BHO trojans, are not able to, to capture this data. But, but Zeus it is. The web fakes is a complete phishing site, you can say. So, so if you put in a, a specific URL in your browser, you completely get redirected to another page. This page usually look like this, uh, where you are asked to put, to put all your data. For example, some banks have give you a card where you have lots of numbers, and each time you want to make a transfer, they, they ask you for some of these dig digits. And as you can see, the people or the cyber criminals make sites or phishing sites where you have to put all your, your data for they are able to, to access your bank account. And uh, the third point is the web injects. So here you don't replace a whole complete in page, but you inject code into the browser. And the result you can see here, for example, on the left side, it, it is like it usually should look. And on the right side, you can see the injected fields, which ask you for more information, which is later used to, to access your bank account. So the control server. This is a screenshot made of the control server. Um, as you can see, it's a, as, our, as I t already told before, it's a PHE P8 interface with a, with a MySQL backend. And uh, basically, you have three different types of things you can do there. You can uh, have the botnet options where you can change or you, where you can access some stats of your infected clients because you, maybe you have created a huge botnet and you can see some stats of them, which operating system is the most used. You can search the logs, so everything is stored. The, the captured data you send to the command and control server is captured or is, is possible to store it into the database or into the log files, which you can uh, search from the, from the interface. And you can change some system profiles, like, like changing the, the image quality of the screenshot it makes and things like this. The installation is quite uh, easy. You just need to set up the, the database, and finally, the installation is made through the uh, PHP interface. Also, you are, you are as I said, you are, you are uh, capable of do, executing botnet scripts on, your, on, on the client side. So like I before talked about the uh, BackConnect feature, which is basically a, a, a script which gets started. You also have other functionality you can, you, can, you can do with the infected clients. No? For example, you have the kill OS switch, which is quite interesting because with this switch you can 
finally destroy the operating system of the infected clients, which is, is kind of strange. I mean, if, if you make your own botnet, why, why do you want to destroy it? But uh, also, it's to, to, to gain time at the end. You have collected all the data, and if you kill the operating system, the people need to reinstall it and need to set up their bank account. And when they do it and realize that the transfer is made, it's maybe already too late. So it's to, to gain time. The second, a second point, which is in the red, uh, which is marked red, you see the, what I talked before about the BackConnect functionality. And important is also you can execute additional binaries. So you can make the bots to surf to an URL download the uh, binary from there and execute it. So basically, this is a banking Trojan. But with this fun functionality, you can download and execute additional, uh, additional binaries, which may be a, a spam bot or things like this. So with this, it's, it's quite, uh, you, can, you can add new features, which don't count the SUS, but it's, it's you are capable of, of, of also installing new files on the infected clients and some other stuff, which. I will skip now. So the kill OS, what does it do? It completely de deletes uh, registry br branches, zeroes all memory up to, uh, to four gigabyte, and the result is a blue screen of death. At the end, you are not able of to, to reboot your system clearly because the, the main important files are missing. And the guy from the SUS tracker, I don't know if you know it, the SUS tracker is a, a Google Maps page where you can see the command and control service of the SUS strands. And he already had access to a database, such a database of, of stolen data, where he saw that one, one, one cyber criminal really executed this kill OS uh, command, which, which I didn't see on an active installation until now. So it gets really used also by the cyber criminals, this, this feature. So as I said before, also as, as it's a kit, which is sold, it comes with a PHP interface, and you have all the, binary, uh, the, the PHP files. You can also change this, this command and control infrastructure. And people also do this. They change this and uh, add new skins, for example, or do other stuff and resell it. I mean, it's not the primary intent of the, of the guy, of, of the creator of A2Z, of the Sustran, that people take it and actually make money without of it. Because of this, it's quite funny. Last year, he introduced an end user license agreement, which is quite funny, because maybe you don't have that environment of trusted people you, you work with, no? But this uh, end user license agreement, for, for example, stated that people are not allowed to change it and, and to resell it. And in case he, the guy, sees that people do it, he will send the, the, the files to the antivirus uh, manufacturers and, and things like this. So a quite funny, funny note. And also what he states in his uh, end user license agreement that for, for example, but you, you buy his product now, and if you, if you find bugs or, or something isn't working on his product, he assures you he's going to fix it. So you have to contact him, he's going to fix it. And also for if you need uh, special features, you, you have to pay for it and things like this. But he skipped this already because he maybe saw it, it's not really working like he thought. Okay, the command and control infrastructure also had some vulnerabilities. Here you have a screenshot of a more old version of the first of the versions from the command and control infrastructure. As you can see here, this is the installing page. And as you can see, you can see here the password and, and the, the user for accessing the MySQL database. And as it is like, like always, people are lazy. The same password is mostly used to the, to the uh, command and control server.